today I want to talk about something completely new, um, which is the runtime fields, which also is a completely new paradigm in basically how we how we work. And I have prepared a little bit of examples, but before we get there, so that should be enough. Before we get there, I want to take a quick step back and explain what runtime fields are actually. And it's kind of a completely yeah, paradigm shift if you want and how Elasticsearch treats data. Because so far, in order to search across data, you always had to index data. You always had to create those data structures, uh, store them on disk, this whole inverted index, doc values, you name it. Um, and that, of course, meant that you had to potentially write a lot of data. And while this is most of the time feasible if you search this data a lot, it might not be if you only do a one-off search and you don't really care um, about the uh, duration of that search, or if you don't know the structure of your data um, unless you really took a look at that. So just to make sure everyone is on the same page, I do run a not yet released version of Elasticsearch here, um, 7.12. Uh, this is just because I want to demo some features that will come up in the next minor version. Um, so if you want to do the same, you either wait until 7.12 is released, or alternatively, you just uh, use a snapshot build. All right, let's get started. And let's get started by creating an order index, uh, which contains a timestamp and an items index. So this is all regular, no fancy features. You would store your orders like this. You would contain a timestamp, a total field, an items field. Uh, you would store another order in here with a, with a single item. We could also store a third order. And this is also all good old aggregations without any new features. So what we would do here is um, we would use the timestamp and maybe figure out on which days we actually sold our items. So how can we figure out the most common hour or the hour of the day and also use this in our queries as a range filter? We could basically um, either use a script or we can use runtime fields. And the idea of runtime fields in this context is that you create this field once and then you never ever have to provide it as a script again. So in this example, I basically create a runtime field called hour of the day which just returns the hour like um, 6 a.m. or something like that. So when we now execute a search, we can basically retrieve back the source and the hour of the day field. In order to keep the response as small as possible, I just include those two fields. And you see here, um, that is the source for the timestamp. And that is the hour of the day. You see here that pretty much matches. Um, also here, you see we have a, another time zone here. So if it's 18 over there, the hour of the day will always be returned in UTC. That might be important if you filter on this. So what we could do now is we could run an aggregation and specify our not real field or virtual field, our runtime field, just by running the hour of the day. And if we see the response, we have two buckets, one for the hour from 12 to 1 or 12 to 13, depending how you read your clock, and the other one for 5 p.m. And from a query perspective, this doesn't look anything like a script. It just really hides the implementation fact that there is a runtime field in there, right? You treat this exactly the same as if you would index your data. The same applies for queries. We could also use this field now in a range query and just search for documents that have the hour of the day lower than 13. Uh, if we execute this, we get the same two documents back that previously were basically put into this aggregation bucket. So again, you don't see that there's runtime fields involved. Uh, of course, you would probably see this in a bigger data set because as their name says, there's a, the disadvantages that they have to be calculated on runtime. Um, and uh, because our data set is so small, it doesn't really matter in this set. But of course, the moment you run this against bigger data, you see that there's a speed difference. And this is also the whole idea behind it, right? You basically 
trade the speed of a query by not needing that space on this, by not needing to create those data structures in memory against the ability to still run those queries despite not knowing on index creation what fields you want to create. Um, also, you don't need to change the mapping. Um, you can also just uh, define runtime mappings as part of a search request. Um, that might be especially interesting if you're starting to explore your data and you want to figure out how certain things look before you basically store this in the mapping. So in this example, we create a field called month and we emit the month value. That will be from a one to 12. Um, and we just interested in documents that are basically after April, because all of the um, documents are in the same month, this returns all of the documents. Uh, in this case, no document would be returned. Again, the query itself is completely unaffected of um, how the mapping looks like. So this is a new feature coming in 7.12, uh, where we can use grok to basically extract data, because so far I only use the script. So you can see here, this is the log format of a default Crystal application. Crystal is a programming language similar to Ruby, but it's a binary. And um, it's not the nicest format. And in order to basically extract the timestamp, we could go like this and use Grok expression. We could probably also just search for the first white space um, with index off in the script. But for the sake of example, um, let's stick with this. So we define timestamp runtime field and uh, return the time in milliseconds. This emit part of the script is basically emitting this, this value for runtime field. So if we do run this and again, rerun this timestamp, you will see that the timestamp field is correctly extracted from those two documents above. Again, we can just run a search with the add timestamp field. Um, the search doesn't differ from any regular search. We get back out to documents. You may wanna use dissect instead of grok because it's a little bit faster. That's just a general practice that also applies to ingest processes in this example. Um, and the last part is that we can basically, uh, oops, run the grok statement. You can retrieve the mapping back and you can see how the runtime field is basically mapped we can execute another search and get back our documents. And if you go to production, this is with a decent sized data set. Um, one of the hints is you could, should use async search. So the async runs in the background and at some points returns with all the data because this um, takes a performance impact. So in this example, uh, everything was returned within the first data set and within time. So we don't have an async search that we need to keep polling, but this is really important once you use this feature. And one last interesting feature here is that you can mix indices that contain runtime fields and you can just combine them with indices that don't contain runtime fields. So if at some point in time you want to move a runtime field to an index field, you can just keep all of your queries the same and you don't have to change anything. And as an example, I created an index that contains the timestamp fields over here with the exact same documents indexing this data and the moment we run across the log star indices, so we match logs and logs two, uh, you will see that this query just works as well. So combining those two um, works just as fine. So that is the current state of, of runtime fields. Um, again, I think it, it requires quite some change in how you think about your data, but it's really powerful if you have not started indexing all your data, maybe out of size reasons, maybe out of other reasons. And in the future, you can potentially emit several fields at once because right now you have to reuse the same grok or dissect expression for every field you want to define. Um, there will also be in one of the future releases a runtime field editor for index patterns. So this will fully be integrated into Kibana. And yeah, please leave feedback or create issues if you want to play around with it. Um, especially we are super interested in the use case. And as usual, I'm going to share the Kahoot of the day. See you tomorrow and have a nice day.